Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Happy Friday. For those that are here live. For those that are here any day, thanks so much for being here. I'm, I'm honored that you're here and thank you so much. I don't take you for granted. I really appreciate it. It means a lot that we're together. It means a lot that we have this opportunity. So I adjust my collar here. We've been in this world for the past few days of trying to deepen our fights, trying to understand what's underneath the world that we look at every single day. And when we understand that the struggles that we're going through, forget the struggles that come at us, forget the physical stuff, forget the health, the, let's not get there. Just the, the general day-to-day -day challenges that we deal with when we understand that the general day-to-day -day challenges that we are engaged in could be, let's just leave it like that, could be really the, the personalized program for our spiritual greatness. You go to a trainer, the trainer develops a personalized program for your goals what you eat, what you exercise. It could be that this entire thing called life is the personalized program of the creator of the universe for you. This is sort of like Kabbalistic stuff. So I don't want to push people too far until they understand it. This is the secret, if you will, or the source of this, of this tradition that we have that each person is supposed to say, when they wake up, the world is created for me. You know, there's a tradition that we have that the two lines that we're supposed to say to ourselves every day is that the world was created for me and that I am uh, but dust and ash. In Hebrew, it's ha'olam nivra bishvili and anochi afar ve'efer. For the Israelis, I hope you liked my Israeli accent on that one. At least I tried. These, con these contrasts. And we can get into what does it mean to be ash and dust, but at least let's go to the first part, which is ha'olam nivra bishvili, the world was created for me. Now, clearly God's not like, hey, let, let me make you more arrogant. Thank you, Daniel. I have my Israeli on right now, giving me my uh, giving me my uh, my vote of Israeli confidence. I appreciate that. This concept that the world is created for me is really a piece of this, which is the creator of the universe put me in this world, and there's a personalized program to bring my soul to a level of excellence. Now, if you think about this too much, you can drive, you drive yourself crazy. But if you don't think about this at all, you can miss it. That maybe some of the things that I'm going through right now really are there because this is my gym. This is my work. This is why I'm here. It's not the stuff that gets in my way and there's a path that I know I need to take. And the other stuff is just annoying because it's in the way. It could be that the path that I need to take might be the distraction. And the stuff that I need to do is the path. It could very well be that the path that we've chosen for ourselves really is a path that has been given to us by the people around us. We don't even realize it because of neuroplasticity. We've just been exposed to it. And now we think it's us. We think it's us, but it's not us. It's our, it's our environment setting the goals of what's important. It's our environment deciding the hierarchy of values. It's our environment creating the race that we're on right now. We could be running in a race that we just inherited by the fact that we were born in this particular area, by the way, which itself is part of the process which itself is part of the 
spiritual. You didn't just end up where you are because. But maybe the stuff that we're going through is a dynamic, personalized program for our eventual spiritual greatness. Now, if my eyes are physical, I won't be able to see it. And if my eyes are fixated on materialistic goals only, we're supposed to be able to live in this world. We're supposed to be able to be successful in the physical world. We have a world where six days a week we're supposed to work. We're not living in the Garden of Eden. But if my eyes are only fixated on material pleasures and pursuits, I may miss the underlying focus of my actual life. But as I start to look at values, as I start to contemplate the physical, the end of my physical life, where I get to just be in a place of truth and look back at my life and look for the underlying values that should have shaped me and should have driven me through, the, through all the, the, the pathways that the physical world has given me. As I start to do that, what's happening is I'm starting to clarify my lenses to see the physical world as just the garment of the spiritual world. And so the work that I'm doing, the challenges that I'm facing, the goals that I have really are the manifestations of my values. If that's how we see the world, now we're playing at a, a different level. And now the things that I go up against, I can try to extract the value from. So if my children really are there because I want to either make them independent or successful, or they, they, they bring me some level of, of benefit, great. But if my children are there or my friends or my, or my community or whatever it is that you have around you are there, maybe in part to extract out my greatest traits, then maybe the fact that they just spilled the cereal all over the floor asked them, I asked after I told them 30 times not to eat in the living room is a personalized program for me to learn patience at a level that I never had to learn it before. And maybe that kid who I'm teaching or I'm around who is driving me off the wall every single day is designed for me perfectly. And maybe the challenge that I'm in right now in anything, maybe the difficult person in my office, again, if it's dysfunctional, if it's abusive, I'm not, I'm talking about, I'm, I want to stay away from all extremes just for a few minutes. Once this happens, our minds start going into the extremes. Let's just stick the principle in the middle. Maybe. I'm in this space so that I can learn how to be generous to those that don't respond back. Or there's a guy in my office who is really as difficult as he or she is or difficult as she is maybe there's someone that is maybe no one's ever smiled at them maybe no one's ever said a kind word to them and i have the opportunity to light someone's life up maybe maybe someone else has it easy in an area that i'm struggling because it's gonna build me into a person that is empathetic to those that don't have this particular thing. And when I get it, if I get it, but when I get it, I'm not gonna forget those that don't have it. That's gonna make me a better person to feel someone else's pain. Since we don't know either way, this is definitely in the world of faith. If you incline towards, nah, it's a coincidence, fine. 
It was just live physically. It's okay. But if you incline towards, let me look to see the deeper meaning in things. At the very least, we start to see the world differently and we start to develop a perspective that brings meaning to my every day. And it allows me to muster up the energy and it, it allows me to zero in the pain to the muscle, the spiritual muscle to enable that muscle to grow. So my patience is actually growing because I'm focusing on it. And my empathy is actually growing because I'm focusing on it. And so when I sit in the gym of life, no matter what comes my way, I'm actually growing as me, as a human being. I'm not just getting closer or further from a material goal that at the end of the day, when I get it, it will never deliver the level of emotion that I thought it would. Ever have that feeling? Do you ever have that feeling of disappointment after a material goal? I remember when I graduated law school, I expected it to be like a day filled with an unending emotional, you know, wash of joy. It was good for like the few hours, but like it didn't give me what I thought, right? The physical world never gives us the emotional, spiritual satisfaction that we think it will give us when we're in pursuit of it. You know who said this well? Tom Brady. It's Super Bowl Sunday. You might as well quote Tom Brady, right? He's the GOAT. The guy's 55 years old. He's still making Super Bowls. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to give the guy credit. There was a time where, like, the, your NFL career ended at, like, 32 Tom Brady's like 42, 43 years old. My sports fans, you'll know exactly how old he is. He's in the Super Bowl this Sunday. That's insane. I just saw a quote basically saying that Tom Brady, the, the pleasure of the Super Bowl ends the night after he wins and the rest is just the focus on the next Super Bowl. Like he understands that the physical world can only give you so much. To him, it's the it's the journey of, of, the, of the game that gives him more. But that's what I'm getting at, which is once we start to be real with the world and start realizing that the pursuit that I'm after, I've been doing this for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. I got to use the historical knowledge that I've developed, the physical pursuit that I'm after. Awesome. But I don't want to oversell how it's going to feel. It's going to feel good for a few minutes, but I don't want to oversell it because I've been doing this before. I've achieved a little bit in my life. And so when you're, when you're reminding yourself that it's going to be good, but it's not going to be that good. It's going to be good until. It only drives us to saying, I don't want to have that feeling after the physical accomplishment five minutes. I want to have the deeper feeling. I want to be able to go into this world and achieve things, but have it at a much deeper level. And when you're fighting the battles at the value level, when you're looking at the material stuff coming at you and saying, wait a second, yeah, I hope I can overcome this challenge to get that thing. But wait, in the challenge, it, it's fighting which parts of my values, which parts of my spiritual muscles. And I want to fight that battle as well. When you're looking at the daily battles that we go through and the daily opportunities that come our way, and we look at it from the lens of which spiritual muscles I can build, the feeling, the spiritual satisfaction that we get takes place consistently at such a higher clip than the material win we get at the end of a journey. We're not anxious until we win and then you enjoy it for two minutes and then you move on to the next thing. Every day, there's a certain feeling of, I'm going to be different by the time I go to bed tonight. I'm going to move a few inches in the area that I want to be. I'm getting closer to the reason why I'm here. And we get lost in this world of what's my reason for being here? What's my task? Why am I on this earth? If you have these conversations, the easiest way to see it is what's in front of me. 
like the more dramatic way of seeing it is like, I don't know why I'm in this earth. Maybe I'm in this earth to be this. Maybe I'm in this earth to be this. And people say these things, you're in this earth to do this. You ever get that from some, this is why you're here. I love when someone tells that to you, like as if like God's like, by the way, you see that part, you just let them know as if they have like, this is why you're here. As if anybody knows the drama that goes around mission of life. And there is reasons why we're here. Nobody knows why we're here. Nobody knows why we're here. If anything that I've learned from the rabbis that I'm close to in that, that live in like this spiritual world, the stuff that we think we're doing is uh, no, one has, no one has a clue. No one has a clue. A person could be going and, you know, going to like the emergency room and the best doctor ever. And he's saying the reason why I am here is in order to save lives. And that's very valuable. But maybe the reason why he's here is because along the way, how he, before he actually goes into the surgery, he gives somebody the encouragement. Who knows? Who knows? why I'm here, why we're here, what the mission of our lives are. We have clues, what I'm good at, what I enjoy doing most, where I bring value to the world. These are clues. Let me give you a clue. The stuff that's in front of you every day, that's a good clue. If God brings you stuff every day, it's probably somewhere close to why you're here. Why we're here may be a little bit less than we're going to sit on a podium one day and God's going to be like, ah, that's why you're here. This is your mission and you've accomplished it. And then the credits go up. That may be a little Hollywoody. Maybe the closer version to that is, you know why I'm here? I don't know. Let me look at my day. That may be a clue as to why I'm here, the stuff that God throws at me every single day. And maybe if we stop thinking about like the podium and start looking at this, the path, we start realizing like, I don't know why I'm here, but why don't I just become great every day? Why don't I just look for the clues that are in my life? And yeah, if I'm really good at something and I want to do more of it and something else gives me material benefit and honor, but this thing that I love doing, maybe I should go down more of that road. Okay. That seems like a good clue too. I don't know, but if me and you decide that every day of my life, I'm living my mission, And my mission is what the general gives me every day. Isn't that higher? Like, what's a better soldier? The one who sits around the barracks and is like, why am I here? Hmm, to be a sniper, to be a commando, I don't know, a paratrooper, of tanks. Or is a better soldier going, what does the general want for me to do today? Are we cleaning the barracks today? Let me just clean the barracks as best as I can. What's the general want today? Are we, we're jumping out of helicopters? Let me try to be the best at hell. We're swimming in the sea? Okay. That, the confidence in the general gives the soldier the ability to go and fight any battle that gets put his way. Maybe that's our mission. Maybe that's our foundation. When I start thinking about the values that I want to live and leave in this world and that, that I want to embody, and I start working slowly every day together to clean the lenses, to look at the world and see what assignment the king gave me today, what assignment the general had for me today. Ha'olam never bishvili, the world was created for me. I got, I got, I got a list today. I wake up in the morning and I put on those glasses and say, all right, let's make today great. Let's go deeper. Let me ask myself when I'm involved in something, what value, what trait is being used right now? Let me see if I can build this thing called the soul up.
and use the exercises of the physical world to build a strong soul. Maybe when we look at the world that way, our days feel different. All right, we'll continue this. The mission, because that's the next trait. The next trait is king is kingship. When you build your foundation strong, you become a prince and a princess, a king and a queen. You become, you become royalty. The next trait is called malchus, which is royalty. All right, we'll discuss. All right, everybody, have an amazing weekend. For those that are sports fans, enjoy the Super Bowl. For everybody else, enjoy the weekend. Have a great weekend. Good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom. And with God's help, I can't wait to see you again next week. Thanks so much for being with me this week. And I can't wait, with God's help, to see you again next week. Have a good weekend.